A few days after my brother got married, I was at my grandma's house for lunch. She asked me who the colored boy was in my brother's wedding. I quickly told her his name was Ben and he was my brother's coworker. And then I quickly corrected her terminology. My name's Katie Toms. I've been married to my husband, Chris, for 16 years, and I'm originally from Salem, Oregon. A defining moment for me was my relationship with my grandmother. We were close my entire life. We went to church together. I ate lunch with her five days a week. A few days after my brother got married, I was at my grandma's house for lunch. She asked me who the colored boy was in my brother's wedding. I quickly told her his name was Ben, and he was my brother's coworker and then I quickly corrected her terminology. Jumping forward to 2002, Chris and I got engaged. However, at this point in my life, the racism in my family quickly came to the surface. My grandmother had written me letters my entire life. One day, I received a five-page letter from her after we got engaged. The first four pages talked about reasons that Chris might not be acceptable. Mostly, they were inaccuracies. However, the fifth page of the letter really spoke her heart. She was not okay with my choice of husband based solely on the color of his skin. I remember sobbing in my apartment, quickly calling my mom, and just letting out all my emotions. I never thought that my decisions would be questioned based solely on skin color. My entire life, I had been told to select a partner and a husband who loved God and loved me, and Chris exemplified both of those things. A few years after we got married, my mom called me one day. She had just gotten off the phone with my grandma. My grandma had told her about the previous Sunday. She had been helping out playing piano for the kids' church, and the kids had been selecting songs that they wanted to sing. One kid picked Jesus Loves the Little Children. It was at that point that the Holy Spirit spoke to her and convicted her, and she told my mom that she had not been doing that with my husband. But that was a defining moment in my grandma's life. From that moment, she became Chris's greatest advocate. My grandma and I never really talked about it after that, but her attitude toward him changed. She asked him questions, about his life, she asked to touch his hair because she had never done that before. It was just little things. And when Asher was born, she loved him. I heard stories at her funeral of her correcting other family members and admonishing them to love Chris and to love my family, no matter what we looked like. As a white woman married to a person of color, I would tell you to believe the stories they tell you. They are true. I didn't always believe them before I met Chris and before I experienced those experiences with him. His experiences being a person of color are significantly different than my experiences being a white woman. A specific couple from black history that inspires me is Mildred and Richard Loving. The Lovings inspired me because they didn't set out to do something great. They just wanted to be married. They just wanted to live as a family because that's what they were, no matter what the law said. And that inspires me and inspired me with my family because we loved each other and we love God and that's what mattered. What a powerful story we just heard. As a church, we're on a journey together. There's some of us that are in need of healing. We've been hurt. There's some of us that need to grow and need to learn more. And so we've created this resource, manahouse.church slash justice. Check that out. It's a great resource for you to learn, grow, hear some more of these stories. And we're excited to walk alongside you in your journey.